Hey, what's happening there guys and gals? You join me on a sunny but windy day on my wife's Kawasaki Ninja 125 and in today's video we are going to discuss why cornering on a motorcycle might not be as easy as you think. Let's get into it. So interestingly enough, cornering is one of those things that when you start learning to ride a bicycle or a motorcycle for that matter, actually starts to come quite naturally to be honest with you. A lot of the turning that's involved is kind of coordinated with the balance side of things. So from that standpoint, a lot of the cornering comes naturally as you practice. But there are a few nuances with cornering that might seem a little bit weird and they might seem Kind of counterintuitive i suppose and they're perhaps things that you haven't heard of before so let's jump on the little ninja 125 let's go for a ride and yeah let's see if we can clarify a few things about cornering on a motorcycle yeah that landscape is just wicked today with all those clouds and stuff it's a shame it's a windy day today because it would actually be quite warm if uh, if we didn't have the cold arctic wind around the uh southwest of the uk but yeah, let's uh, jump on the little Ninja 125 and let's see how we get on. So luckily for you, if you are learning to ride a motorcycle and it is a 125cc bike, as uh, probably most of you in the UK will, then you've got it quite lucky because these bikes are almost like bicycles just with motors in them. So they're really lightweight, so flicking them around is super easy. But we kind of covered this a little bit on our braking video. Why braking might not be as easy as you think. And of course, the, the, all, all these skills, all these techniques, they do tie in together. But the biggest one is when you're coming into a corner, you brake hard before going into the corner. So I'm braking hard now, going down a gear, letting go of the brake and then turning the bike in. Now, if I need to slow down more, I can go down a gear, rev match, and that will slow me down even further. But the main thing you want to do is do as much braking as you possibly can on approach to the bend. So, braking hard, turning into the apex. Yeah, I suppose you could treat it a little bit like the racing line on a track i mean obviously you're not going as fast as you possibly can but keeping kind of that idea in mind where you start off if you're going on a left hand bend like this one in lane three hit the apex into lane one and then accelerate away back out into lane three and then of course the opposite applies on a right hand bend you can certainly treat bends like that and to be honest, it's probably going to be safer for you because a lot of the time, if you're moving over in lane one like this turn here, I can actually see further around the bend than if I was in lane three, for example, or lane two. So it does make sense to change your lanes as you're going into bends. So yeah, I mean, of course, don't, don't, treat, don't treat the street like a racetrack, of course, but you can apply some of the same ideas, I suppose. So yeah, braking hard before going into a bend is really important and I don't know, you, you guys have probably seen it before, the amount of videos of riders just going straight uh, yeah, way too fast into bends and they don't know what to do so they try braking in the middle of the bend and one or two things happen, they either stand the bike up and so the bike just keeps going straight forward, you know, because naturally that's how you get the most amount of braking force is when you're upright on a motorcycle, or secondly, uh, the front wheel just locks up and the bike slides out from underneath them. It's a very, very common thing that you see happening with riders going too fast around bends. So, like I said, always, always brake as much as you can before going into the bend. It will save you a lot of hassle while you're in the bend and of course remember to accelerate out of the bend. Because you get a little bit more grip if you pull the throttle back a little bit as you come out the bend. Now the next tip when it comes to cornering is to leave the damn bike in gear. Don't coast, don't ever ever coast your motorcycle around a bend. Trust me, that is a very very bad idea. Now what I mean by that is by pulling in the clutch and holding the clutch in as you're going around a bend. It's uh, 
not ideal to say the least. Yeah, when you are going around bends like this, leave the bike in gear because you never know. You might want a little bit of that engine braking force from that particular gear. I mean, that's why I mentioned earlier about rev matching and going down a gear if you are going slightly too fast onto a bend. And uh, yeah, it, it, that's one of the main reasons, guys. You want to stay in control of the motorcycle as much as you can. And believe it or not, all the times when you are moving and you have the clutch pulled in, you're not in control of the bike. Yeah, so it's really, really important that you keep that clutch out when you're going around bends. Now, this is a funny one, and uh, you probably do it naturally without even thinking about it, and that is counter steering. So, counter steering is when you're traveling, say, past 10 miles an hour or so, 15 kilometers an hour, you'll actually find that if you turn the handlebars left, the bike will go right, and the same vice versa. So, Let's see if we can come up to a bend here and I'll, and I'll demonstrate. But it might sound counterintuitive. And yeah, I, I suppose it, it kind of is, but a lot of the time, if you are having to do like an emergency evasion maneuver or something like that, counter steering is the quickest way to turn the bike around. So we're coming up to a, a slight bend here. I'll just go up a gear. Oh no, yeah, yeah we, we've got a few bends coming up. And I'll demonstrate counter steering. Now even just then, I, I kind of wiggled the uh, the handlebars ever so slightly, but look, here we go. So I'm going to turn the handlebars left, and the bike turns right. You see that? I mean, the, uh, the motion <laughs> on the handlebars is really a kind of, what's the word, subtle. But here you go, so right hand bend, or excuse me, left hand bend, and we're turning the handlebars right. Now I'm going to drop down a gear, just because we're going up this hill. But, so I didn't even have to turn the handlebars that much to get the turning or the, uh, the cornering angle that I needed. But honestly, try it out for yourselves. If you haven't done counter steering before on your motorcycle, try it. You'd be surprised at how effective it actually is. And I suspect it will actually be more effective coming down this hill rather than going up it, as I'll be going in at a higher speed. And that's the main, the main benefit to counter steering is, yeah, if you're going at a higher speed and you haven't got enough time to slow down before you approach, say, a crash or something like that, then, yeah, turning, doing counter steering is really, really beneficial. And it can help you out in a lot of ways. Whoa. Still, one, two, five is struggling to get up this hill. To be honest, I might just turn around and come back down the hill. I don't know, but we'll see. There you go, counter steering again. Counter steering, you see? I'm not even pushing or pulling the handlebars that much, but it's making a, a massive difference because you can turn a bike uh, what's, what's the word? In the conventional way, I suppose. You could call it the conventional way. So I'll try it here. So I'm, I'm leaning into the corner and I'm actually pulling on this left handlebar here. I'm actually pulling on it to give me that, that kind of turning pressure or that, that turning angle. But yeah, I'm going to turn around, I think. No, 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 I'm not actually. I'm going to keep going the way, the way I am. I think I know my way out of this little village here. But yeah, counter steering, very, very effective. I mean, just, just doing these things. Like this. And by the way, it doesn't matter which way you have your, your body weight. If you have your body weight in a particular start, say upright, and you're not leaning into the bend, the bike doesn't care. As soon as you try counter steering, the bike is gonna go in the opposite direction, regardless of where your body weight is. Obviously, it's better for you to have your body weight going into the bend i suppose if you're trying to go as fast as you can then maybe that's the case but for normal street riding you can actually have the opposite weight if you like instead oh wow so we've reached <laughs> we've reached some serious traffic here ah, we're approaching a bend which is very helpful for viewing what's going on up ahead yeah filtering on a bend isn't the best thing, but oh, this lorry driver's letting me through. What a legend. 
Thank you, thank you very much mate. That guy is awesome. Fair play, he saw me in his mirror and let me go through. That is freaking amazing, on a bend as well. And look, I think we're just about to reach the roundabout here where the bottleneck should in theory end, but we'll see. But yeah, what, what a ledge. And look, most lorry drivers don't do that. Oh, that's a nice car. Look, see, this, this, this guy isn't going to move for me. But then again, you know, oh no, no, he is. He's moving, he's moving for me. Thank you. Thank you very much. Awesome, awesome. We get lots of nice people today. <laughs> and these guys have probably been stuck in this traffic for ages. Yeah, that is, that is wicked. <laughs> Gosh, what a, what a nice day to be out, <laughs> out for a ride, eh? I'm gonna merge in here, I reckon. Just uh, so I don't push my luck too much. <laughs> Alright guys and gals, so I'm just about to join this dual carriageway now. Finally got past the traffic, which is good, but man, it's gotten an awful a lot windier, a lot more windy uh, going onto this open stretch of road here. And the annoying thing is that whenever I'm going at these kinds of speeds, I mean, well, 50 miles an hour, it's not even that fast, really. But when I'm doing kind of highway speeds, motorway speeds, and there's heavy winds. Yeah, trying to, I'm trying to talk quieter so I don't get clipping on the audio. That's what tends to happen when we've got high speed winds, even though we've got, oh, blimey. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm gonna hold on to the GoPro here, I think, because <laughs> I don't want it to go flying. But yeah, I tend to find that the audio clips even with the dead cat on because it's not really designed for <laughs> this level of wind, I think. Ugh. Ugh. God, the wind is awful, man. Absolutely horrific. Right, guys and girls, finally managed to make it out of, out of that traffic and out of the wind there. Oh, nightmare but yeah one of the last tips that I've got for you around cornering on a motorcycle is a lot of this is going to depend on the weather conditions like for example the wind here that we've got at the moment is it is disgustingly fast and the problem that we've got is cornering hard when it's windy it just throws your balance off completely at least on a heavier bike anyway it's easier to control the level of wind or kind of like the amount the wind pushes you but on a little bike like this one you'd be surprised at how much the wind affects your riding but of course you've got wet roads as well you don't really want to be going into a bend with a massive lean angle when the roads are wet I mean I think that's fairly obvious I think most of you lot will know that already as well. On dry road, yeah, it's pretty easy going into bends quite sharply, getting, getting a nice amount of lean angle, but yeah, when the roads are wet, take it easy. Try and keep the bike as upright as you possibly can when cornering. But yeah, guys and girls, I think I'm gonna leave the video here. I think I've been through all of the tips that I had in my head anyway for this moto vlog, so. Thank you ever so much for watching. Thank you for joining me on this on this lovely-ish, windy, <laughs> windy day's ride. But yeah, a lot of you that are new to the channel, welcome. And I hope that if you are a learner, or if you're looking to get into motorcycles, I hope that you've learned something in today's video. Yeah, guys and girls, uh, any of you seasoned riders out there watching this video, make sure to leave your tips and tricks in the comments. As I always say, we, we're a community. We're here to make ourselves better riders or to help each other make make ourselves better riders so yeah if you've got any little golden nuggets of knowledge make sure to drop them in the comment section below i'm sure that some of our beginner rider viewers will appreciate the extra experience and the extra knowledge that the wider community has to offer but yeah thank you ever so much for watching guys and gals hope you've enjoyed this journey with me and we will catch you all in the next video have a good one